if you look at reporting this year, I would say in general, most results were in line with expectation. There were companies that did outperform and underperform expectation, but on aggregate, most performed in line. Really, I think where there were some interesting sort of themes emerging were more on the outlook statements and guidance provided by companies. In many cases, um, there were more downgrades to expectations and upgrades. And this was really driven by the fact that the cost environment for many companies is still very difficult to overcome. When you look at the cost environment, we're really focusing on things such as labor rates, energy and transport. Companies that had higher amounts of labor in their cost base were downgrading, while as companies with lower amounts of labor were seeing some marginal upgrades. But generally speaking, it was a, a softer outlook. One thing that did emerge was that higher quality growth companies did outperform. And this was really something that we've been focused on here at ECP. Look, in terms of key themes emerging, really, I think it came from a macro level down. From the macro perspective, it, it, it was clear that everybody's been expecting a weaker economy. They've been expecting interest rates to start to bite, mortgages to start to hurt people. However, I think that what we actually saw was some alleviation of those concerns. Commonwealth Bank in particular, who had been quite bearish up until now, started to talk more about the fact that their underlying mortgage stress and bad and doubtful debts were actually seeming to be more in control. And they actually loosened up their outlook and, and said that they felt that almost the worst of what was expected in the economy had actually come through. If you look at the actual sort of more granular themes, margin misses was definitely something that occurred across more companies than not. This was offset by higher sales. But when you look at the margin misses, again, costs coming through, costs biting a lot of companies. And in particular, as I've stated before, the labour rates really being one of the key drivers of that. If you look at it on the deconstruction and, and going forward, really seems hard to see how those cost structures are going to come down again. I think we've got higher costs for longer, so that needs to be factored in. If you look at some of the other concerns in, in terms of themes, near-term concerns, um, were alleviated for many companies and you saw positive EC EPS surprises. And, and when I talk about this, I'm thinking more on the retail side, discretionary retailers, there were real concerns that we'd be seeing downgrades coming through, but companies like, you know, La Visa, Domino's, um, IEL saw strong results, and even companies like car sales where there were question marks over pricing power were able to beat trend. On the software side for, for themes, we definitely saw a, a return to the more normal sales cycles. Some of these companies have been under pressure over time and we're starting to see better sales processes coming through. And I think that's another theme that's going to continue. Stocks that were most report, rewarded this reporting season were really companies that had stuck true to their investment thesis or their strategies, delivered results that were in line with expectations and really played a very simple story in terms of the outlook. Clearly, if a company was able to maintain its forward guidance or increase it, they were rewarded handsomely by the market with many companies up double digits on the back of this. So I think that in this environment, high quality businesses that are able to demonstrate effective execution of strategy are really the ones that people are looking at more and more. Also companies that have low levels of debt on their balance sheet, so they're Therefore, they're less impacted by higher interest rate environments. They also were able to see um, rewarding share price movements. The, the final thing that really was rewarded is capital light or labor light companies. So companies that are, are not using large capital bases or have lower costs in their SG&A related to labor, these companies are able to manage what is an inflationary environment. They're able to deliver some price rises given inflation, and they're able to capture more of this into the bottom line of their earnings. This was really rewarded by the market, and it's really going to continue to be a theme over the next six to 12 months. As always, the market never takes kindly to companies that either miss expectations or downgrade their forward outlook. If you're in the, in, in the market now and you haven't been communicating well with investors or others in the market about the outlook and you're downgrading those expectations in a result period, your stock is significantly hit and we saw a number of these happen. Um, many companies now are trying to do better with continuous disclosure in this regard, but, but ultimately if you leave investors 
with uncertainty as to the future of direction of earnings, it's going to have a large impact. And we did see that come across the market and we, we will continue to all the time. It's, it's understanding that sometimes it's difficult to predict the future for, for earnings, but really companies that are focused more on their, you know, the, the costs and things they control and able to communicate better to market, they really do avoid these sorts of areas. So, so I think that we're going to continue to see volatility across some of these sectors because it is uncertain times and you will be penalised as a result. Yeah, ECP being in that quality growth aspect segment of the market um, continues to focus obviously on quality growth companies. Going into reporting season, we've been able to deliver a really strong alpha result in July. So the priority was to, to grow on that into August, which we were able to do. And, you know, we continue to look at the quality companies that we have. What's absolutely critical to the portfolio is properly analysing and getting the the stocks we own correct. If we don't do that, we have the wrong weightings and we don't get to experience the upside from the ones that go up and we don't get to be lower weighted in the ones that go down. So really reporting season for ECP is, is largely about taking new data points, meetings with management, new interactions with others to ensure that investment theses are correct, which then flow into the model, which then flow into the internal rate of returns and weightings in the portfolio. It's always critical to get the stocks you own correct, as opposed to worrying about new ideas. Having said that, reporting season is also a good opportunity for us to look for new ideas, meet with management teams we wouldn't necessarily get to see, gauge what other investors are looking at, and really building a bank of ideas that we can put more and more work into in the coming months. So we continue to think that high quality growth is the space in the market where there are opportunities. Our concentrated portfolio and active management of these names is what helps drive our alpha.